What's up, YouTube? This is JB Panther, back on a video. And today's video is actually going to be like a kind of Star Wars uh, related type topic. And I want to talk to you guys about this because I saw this on an article, right? It's called uh, Bount um, Bounty into Comics. It's um, It pretty much, you know, talks about Collider and stuff like that and Star Wars. And again, I will link the article in the description box down below so you guys can check it out. So you guys can read about it and stuff like that. I'm just going to read about it and give you my quick thoughts. And it's something quick and news update kind of, you know, just to let you guys know. So it says uh, Collider Steven, uh, Wein uh, Steven uh, Weinberg uh, posted then qu uh, post then quick quickly deletes tweet claiming a lot of Star Wars blame on Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker is falls on uh, Kathleen Kennedy and Michelle Riron. Michelle Riron, she's like J.J. Abrams like producer like she's like like J.J. and her are cool whatever but she's also a radical feminist as well and it says according to the tree, uh, the, tw the deleted tweet uh, Collider editor in, ch uh, in chief Steven Frosty Weinberg uh, recently spoke with sources close to Lucasfilm who claimed that a lot of blame for the lackluster Star Wars Rise of Skywalker falls on Kathleen Kennedy and Michelle Ray Wan. And the screenshot taken on January 4th and provided by Reddit user blah blah blah. Uh, Steve uh, also started that it was JJ who came out bringing Papa Team back, which was a huge mmm, with the final word allegedly being mistaken. And, um, <clears throat> Yeah, it might be staken. And also, was, I guess this is his tweet, right? It says, "I." This is what he says. I learned a lot in a few in the past few days about behind the scenes at Lucasfilm. A lot of blame was on you know Star Wars: Rise Skywalker falls on Kathleen Kennedy, blah, blah blah. Saying that it was JJ came up the plan. I guess so. You guys, when you watch, you guys can see the tweet, whatever. And um, Weinberg did not provide any further details. Has not proven any further explanation for the alleged tweet on his personal Twitter. And if. Um, if Stevens uh, deleted tweet had any truth to it, seeming seemingly a recent report from Reddit user in the past, um, this Reddit user I don't know this dude's name. DM says that a source told him that Disney actively sabotaged JJ and Star Wars and Ryan Skywalker in order to hamstring for Warner Brothers so they can't um, we navigate their DC franchise. Abrams on you know blah blah and and again it just keeps on going on and on and on and blah blah blah. I was gonna give you my quick thoughts right. It shows you that even the show media, um, you know, Collider, you guys know that they're a popular YouTube blog, movie talk, and stuff like that. You guys already know, I guess you guys already know that a lot of them got fired and laid off and stuff like that, which is really sad. And it shows you that the Steven uh, Weinberg dude, whatever, he seems like a, a media Disney shield. And it seems like even he had to lie and say, you know, um, a lot of it has to be blamed on Kathleen Kennedy and uh, Michelle Wei Wan and all this other stuff. So it shows like even his personal thing is that he has to play the game just to keep these connections. And it shows you that, you know, him just talking all that crap and deleting it and someone screenshotting it and they can use it against him. It shows you uh, that the media is full of crap and it shows you that a lot of them don't want to tell and express how they truly feel about the movie because they won't get access which means they won't get money and they won't get coverage. So it shows you that a lot of them really don't give a crap and it really shows you when you really pay attention because it's like, bro, you have to make a tweet, delete it, and act like, oh, well, not sure, this and that, this and that, and, you know, it shows that they're full of crap. And it shows that the media shills and all that has to play the game to get the access. And also, like, even, like, what, like Christian Har Harlow, like, he was talking about, um, like, he seemed like he was one of those shit, like, he played the game, the, the Disney politics and stuff like that, and then, you know, he wanted to go to Galaxy Edge, and they pretty much says, F you, we want the female co-workers that work with you to come to Galaxy Edge, not you. Because it was kind of like, I played all these politics games and you guys kind of screwed me over. And that's kind of something that probably uh, was the last straw with Christian. He's just like, bro, I'm out, blah, 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 F it, I'm done. 
and you could tell that's one of the main things that probably pushed him to leave Collider. And honestly, him leaving Collider was probably the best solution. Now he could do other stuff. You feel me? He's on a slow down, uh, SmackDown, whatever, on YouTube and stuff like that. So, you know, he going to be fine. But it just shows you that the Collider people, they can't keep this showing up forever, man. And the problem is I do feel like, you know, even me as YouTube, whatever, a lot of the movie talk that we talk about, uh, a lot of it, you know, let's be honest, it's mostly Disney stuff. You know, it really is because that's the stuff that gets me clicks and gets me uh, attention and a lot of other stuff like that. But it shows you, like, after, like, you know, Rise of Skywalker goes down, you know, um, you know, I got, like, Birds of Prey. We got, like, Mulan. You got, like, Black Widow. But, again, there's nothing big, big movie-wise or Marvel-wise for a while. Until we get, like, little hints here and there, that's really it. But, like... You know, movie talk wise, it's gonna be kind of dead for a while until that the next Marvel DC uh, big big movie that comes out. So again, it's interesting to see this article, and it's really interesting to see what happens. And I don't think he's gonna get any backlash with it, but we'll see what happens in the future. And let's see if the fandom men. And I and I also one last thing I want to say. I do want to say that the fandom menace, even though I disagree with him a lot, because I don't hate the fandom menace. I do think a lot of the times that the fandom menace, they be, uh, they have a lot more hatred, you know what I mean? Like, so it's a lot more easier to hate on something than to like it. And I understand from their point of view, you know, they don't like how Disney stuff, you know, um, how, um, they, they didn't like how Disney's running uh, Star Wars and making it to a feminist political franchise. So I understand it from that point of view. But also, I think part of it with the fandom menace is that I really... I would really want to talk to, like, you know, geeks and gamers and all the other YouTubers, Junk PPO and all those other uh, uh, YouTube channels, whatever. And really want to ask, like, what's the true goal of the fandom menace? Is it just to shit on Star Disney Star Wars and make a... Uh, and just keep bashing it over and over and over? Or... Or is it just to just uh, just keep going on and on? Because what's the end goal? Because like Rise of Skywalker, despite uh, people hating it, it still made money. So even though everybody and the, the geeks and gamers and Phantom Menace and all of them, world class bullshitters, everybody, even though they uh, were bashing it, it still made money. So what's the end goal to... Um, the fandom menace. That's what I'm really curious about. That's really it, guys. Let me know in the comment section below. Tell me what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section below. Uh, rate and like the video and subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Peace and have a great day and take care.